Let's continue our saga here with Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted love to maintain a distance of three between them. Bill likes to move around. Ted doesn't mind, except it forces them to think too much. They live in a one-dimensional space, so all they can conceptualize and geometrically understand is one-dimensional space. Now, think about that when it comes to us. We can conceptualize one dimensions. We can conceptualize two dimensions. And we can conceptualize three dimensions because we live in this three-dimensional world and we move around in it constantly. So three dimensions is no foreign thing to us. However, with Bill and Ted's case, even going as far as two dimensions, that's foreign to them. All right, key concept there that we're going to get to when it comes to these homogeneous coordinates. All right, so Ted's tired of moving around because he has to do some math to figure out where to move to maintain that distance of three from Bill. Bill loves to move around. Ted says, no way, I'm done moving. Bill cries. He would cry in a corner, except it's a one-dimensional space. There is no corner, so he cries and he prays to the gods, the gods being you and me, and says, how can I move me and Ted together using the exact same scalar value? Now, we're merciful gods, so we, we're going to reveal something to Bill that he can use to move him and Ted around, and we're going to have to do what is known as two-dimensional space, which for me and you is easy, but for Bill and Ted, they don't get it, they can't see it, but we'll just use it. All right, uh, previous video I showed you, if I remember right, Bill's location is negative 1 times the basis vector V, which yields this blue vector representing Bill's location. Ted's location is 2, sorry, let me do the proper colors, 2 times the basis vector V, yielding Ted's location out here. Now, it just so happens that the basis vector is drawn over the full vector, which makes Ted's location. But still, Ted is at 2V. And then the last video, Bill wanted to move to negative 4, so we had to multiply Bill's current location by uh, 4. We couldn't just add a negative 3 because this is linear algebra and we have to do linear combinations, which means multiplying um, vectors times other vectors. And so a vector of 4, if you can think of it as, as basically it's the scalar component of a vector times negative 1 puts us out here at negative 4. Ted, same deal. We had to move him to negative 1. So that made us multiply his with current location by negative one half. Well, I don't want to call it a multiplication. Let's call it a transformation. And we've been doing transformations with the ship and all that. But what we used to do the transformation was matrices. Now, just so happens in one dimension, we can do transformations as well. That's what we're doing already, except I forgot, or I've left out the angle brackets, which represents the transformation matrix. But again, the matrix is just containing a single vector, in this case, four in, in this one-dimensional land, and negative one half in this other dimensional land. So I can take this matrix, times it by this vector here, and out will pop a new vector. In Bill's case, that's going to transform his current vector out to this vector here. And then in Ted's case, his current location, uh, his his current vector would be transformed like so. All right, so a key concept here, we're, we're going to use matrices again, even though it's one dimensional. All right, Bill's crying. He's praying. How can I hit both me and Ted with the same transformation okay this is a transformation this is a transformation we need to use an identical transformation both on me bill and him ted so that ted doesn't have to think and ted knows exactly how to move or transform so that i can be happy and move at negative four let's be merciful to bill here i think we're done with this here let's just get rid of this let's be merciful to bill here and reveal to bill how to do this and we're going to reveal two-dimensional math not space, two-dimensional math to Bill, and he'll use two-dimensional math to solve this problem. Now, why am I saying math and not space? Again, it's, uh, it's critical that you catch that Bill has no concept, physically, what two dimensions are. Neither does Ted. All they've known their entire life is one dimension. Now, why is it so important you understand that? Because you and me, physically, do not understand four-dimensional space. We have no idea conceptually, physically, what that means. 
However, when we use homogeneous coordinates in three-dimensional space, we want to do some movement stuff where we're going to have to go to the fourth dimension. I think that's where a lot of people get lost with homogeneous coordinates. Is all of a sudden we add this fourth dimension, and you can't physically see it, but the math works, and it still works the same, even though geometrically you have no idea what it means. Now, here's a deep thought for you. Maybe there is such thing as four-dimensional space, and maybe some other existence higher than ours and greater than ours understands and exists and moves in this fourth dimension. Ooh, something to think about. But similar to what we're experiencing here with Bill and Ted, even though they physically cannot understand two-dimensional math, uh, geometrically or what it means physically to move around, we're still going to use it to their advantage and it will still work the same for them. And it will make Bill happy, it will also make Ted happy. But the reason why I'm using one-dimensional space is because I know that you and me understand two-dimensional space. So geometrically, I can show you, the watcher of this video, two-dimensional space. And you can see physically and geometrically what it's doing, even though Bill and Ted can't see that. And then you can accept that when we have to do three dimensions to four dimensions. Okay, I hope, I hope that's fair. You might need to rewind the video a couple times to think about it, process it slow, but basically I'm showing you 2D to 1D and when I show you 4D to 3D, the idea is still the same, we just can't geometrically understand it. So on that note, let me take this one-dimensional world that Bill and Ted exist in, live in, and that's all they know, and overlay it on top of a two-dimensional space. Hopefully this tool looks familiar. Now the transform we originally hit Bill with to get him down to negative 4 was 4 times his current location. And then Ted, to get him down to negative 1, we hit him with negative 1 half times his current location. And these two transforms are not the same. Right? This one has a 4 and this one has a negative 1 half. And we want a way that we can use one transform and move both of them the same distance up and down this one-dimensional space. Well, to do that, we're going to add the second dimension, which we just did. You can physically see it here. Bill and Ted can't. But we tell Bill, Bill, Bill here, hey, that original basis vector you had right here, extend it out to two dimensions. So just give it a second component. And make that second component value zero for now. And he's like, uh, I can't picture what this does physically, but I'll just play along, sure. We say, hey, by the way, we're going to add a second basis vector, because we are going two dimensional. Right? And the second basis vector will be perpendicular, even though you don't want to know what that means geometrically. It will be perpendicular to your original basis vector. So this makes up what is known as an orthonormal basis. Ortho meaning they're perpendicular. Normal meaning both the basis vectors are length 1. So this basis vector is this basis vector. Physically, you and I can see that. Bill and Ted can't. They don't understand it. Okay, but that's fine. It's going to still solve Bill and Ted's problems. So now that we have both of these basis vectors in a single matrix, let me erase these now. They're still basis vectors, but they are in a single matrix or transformation. We can use this to do some magic to move Bill and Ted around. Remember our original transformations, they had one element each, and they were definitely not equal. But now we're going to come up with a way to use the single transformation to move Bill and Ted up and down the line. Okay, so we go to Bill and we say, hey, by the way, you're at negative 1, which you were originally, but now you have the second component of your original basis vector. And you may think put it at 0, but in order to have this second basis vector contribute anything to where you exist on this one-dimensional line, we cannot use the value 0. Just to prove that to you, let me grab any part of this basis vector, move it around, and notice Bill and Ted's location, they're not moving, all right? They're stuck, all right? And why is that? Well, if you remember from the previous videos, let's use Te uh, Bill here for an example. Bill is negative 1 times this basis vector plus, uh-oh, 0, nothing of the second basis vector. Well, why are we adding the second basis vector if we're not going to use it at all? We, we should probably actually use it. So we want to say, hey, Bill, take something, use a piece of the second basis vector. Let me just adjust these back to our uh, ortho, orthonormal basis. Take that down to zero. Okay, Bill, you, you, Bill, both you and Ted need to take a contribution 
from the second basis vector. So let's pick a value, any value. It just can't be zero. Let's pick the most convenient value there is. And let's use one. All right now notice, Bill's location is changing. He can't physically understand it nor see it. But he changed in our two-dimensional space, and the math's working out quite nice. Now instead of Bill being at negative one, zero, he's at negative one, one. All right, so this down here is no longer Bill's location. This blue vector, which the program is illustrating for us in the background, is Bill's new location. All right, well, Ted, guess what? They have to be in the same one-dimensional space. So let's move him up as well to one just like that. So now they can't see it. They don't understand it. But they're at what is known as the W equals one line. All right, this is the w equals one line before they they floated around on this this i guess if you want to say it's w equals zero oops w equals zero line okay but now we've moved them up to w equals one they they don't know what that means physically they're just playing along because they know the math will work out quite nicely now you may think jamie okay w w oh brain frozen w J what's w jamie well <laughs> You're used to X, right? And you're used to Y, right? Well, W is Y. Right? Can I say that? I don't know. Does that scare you if I say W equals Y? Well, then, Jamie, if W is Y, why are you using W? Why don't you just say Y? Well, I'll tell you why. Because with the big, fat, scary word, homogeneous coordinates, we use the letter W to denote that extra dimension we're taking, even though in this case it's really just Y. All right. When we go 3D to 4D, we'll have, in three dimensions, we have X, Y, and Z. When we go to 4D, well, we can't use X, Y, or Z. They're taken. So we just chose W. I guess we ran out of letters in the alphabet. Who knows? But to be consistent with homogeneous coordinates, I'm going to use W. But if it helps you to think in Y, go ahead and think in Y. That's fine. All right. So Bill and Ted's location <coughs> is at this W equals one line, Y equal one line, if it helps you think of that. And now, using the second basis vector, we can move Bill and Ted up and down their one-dimensional space, which is W equals 1. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, watch. Watch. Hey, Bill, you're praying for an answer. Here you go. I'm going to grab the first component of your second basis vector, which so happens to line up with the first component of the basis vector that you're used to. And I'm just going to push this around. So watch what happens as I move this to the left. Watch what happens to Bill, Bill and Ted's location. I'm going to move it negative. Remember, Bill wants to go to negative 4, so let's let him do that. I'm going to just slide this slider until we get to negative 4. All right. How far do I got to go? Now notice as Bill's moving, what's Ted doing? Ted's moving as well. All right. There we go. All right, Bill is now happy. He's at negative 4 in his one-dimensional space. Ted, he's happy. He's at negative 1 in his one-dimensional space. They're both sitting at the W, or Y, W equals 1 plane, and we're hitting them both with the exact same transformation. What we're seeing here is this matrix to, combined with this vector gives us this result here, and then this matrix combined with this vector gives us this result vector here. Two, right? So the same transformation applied to Bill and Ted moved them down this line together. So it's almost like, if I use my mouse here, look at this. We're almost on like a train using that one basis vector there, that second basis vector, which is ever so important. We're doing, ah, oh, da, da 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 keyword, a translation. All right, we're moving them. Right? None of this having to come up with separate scalars stuff and even using the same scalar actually spaced them apart. We saw an example of that in the video. Now using the second basis vector. and Geometrically, you and me as humans, yeah, this two-dimensional space, I get it. That's cool. Right? But Bill and Ted, they, they can't see it. They just accept it by faith. They're very faithful people in our religion. They accept by faith that, yes, the proper numbers move out here. And now we have this W equals 1. They're not... I mean, they can mathematically understand why they need the one because we're taking one of this basis vector to move them around, but geometrically they don't get this. But geometrically, you and I get it. Let me, um, I think we're done with this. Let me clear this off. 
Uh, let's again move Bill. All right, remember this longer vector here. This was representing Bill. Let's move him. Where was he at? Negative four. So what are we saying here? Well, Bill is taking negative one times the original basis vector. Okay, this is our original basis vector v that we have. We've had forever. So negative one times this gives us this. Okay, and then he's taking 1 times the second basis vector, which is negative 3, 1, or this green vector here. Let me be consistent with my colors here, as consistent as I can be. I know i got colors all over the place, but it's 1 times this basis vector. Well, if I pick this basis vector up, because we're just taking one of them, and I slide them over one, well, you'll see that we'll get something like that. And then look at that. This plus this gives us Bill's new location. Okay, that's all, that's, well, that's not all, but that's pretty much how homogeneous coordinates work. All right, I hope this example worked for you. In future videos, we're going to go, all of a sudden, we're going to have Bill and Ted, all they know and exist in is two dimensions, but we're going to use the third dimension to move them around, yada, yada, yada. You'll probably have to watch this video a few times, but please don't make it harder than it is. Don't turn on the brain blocks. We're just doing stuff in 2D, yet all we can see or all we're representing is the one-dimensional line here.